Taxes Part 1, Deferred Tax Liability. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. You can also find us on Facebook. St. Louis Test Prep is our Facebook page. I want to talk about deferred tax liability, and let's define it first. Deferred tax liability means taxes that are not due currently, not due immediately, they are deferred into a later year. They're a liability because they're a check you have to write. They're deferred because they're not due now. Well, what would cause a deferred tax liability? That's the second bullet point. Why? And the reason is, is that accounting or book income, to introduce a new term, differs from the income that you actually put on the tax return. So the accounting records differ from the tax return. And as a result, there's a temporary difference between what we'll call book and tax. But the long-term result is the same, meaning that eventually it evens out. So if you pay less on the tax return in the early years, you'll pay more tax per the tax return in later years. So eventually it balances out. Let's jump over to our example in Excel. So I have my reason why up here, book income different from the income tax return. And the specific difference that we're talking about with the blue heading is that depreciation expense differs between book and tax. So we have an example over a four-year period. We have pre-tax accounting income, which is on the income tax returns. Less depreciation for tax purposes. And you'll notice that for tax purposes, we have accelerated depreciation, meaning that depreciation expense is higher in the early years. And as we get to 2011 and 12, it's lower. So it's an accelerated method of depreciation. As a result, we come up with taxable income, income minus depreciation. We have a tax rate that differs slightly between years. And we come up with an income tax amount payable each year. Here is our temporary difference. For book purposes, our normal accounting records, we use straight line depreciation, which is $30,000 each year. However, our tax depreciation, this line, which we figured out right up here, is different. It's heavier in the early years, higher expense, less liability. It's less in the later years, lower expense, more liability. So you can see that in this field, we have what we call temporary differences. What's important to realize is, is that the sum of the book differences, the sum of the book depreciation, which is highlighted in blue, is the same as the tax depreciation, the next line below it. So in total, we are depreciating assets for $120,000 in both instances over four years. We're just doing it at a different rate of speed. So you can see here, here's our temporary differences, book versus tax. Year one, it's a $9,600 difference. And it turns out that for tax purposes, we have more expense than for book. Year two, same thing. This line that I'm highlighting is the difference between book and tax, difference between book and tax, all the way across. The easiest way to understand how we handle the deferred tax from a debit and credit standpoint is to look at a T account. Because you can see that in the early years, we're having taxes deferred to future years, so we have a deferred tax liability, which is a credit. In the later years, when we have, for tax purposes, less expense and more income, we have a deferred tax asset. So let's see how the flow works. I think it's important to understand that at the end, at the end of the four years, the deferred tax liability is back to zero. So let's link together what's going on with what the journal entry would be. Year one, we said that from a tax standpoint, we have $9,600 more expense. Here's our difference. Here's the tax rate on that difference. Here's the tax rate on that difference, 30%. And we multiply those two together and get $2,800. So our, our journal entry, which is right here, is we have income tax expense of 9000 
But of that, we have some of it defer 2880 into future years, and some of it is a check that we're going to write right now. So on our deferred tax liability account, we have a credit balance. Year two, we have a total difference, this line, 32,400, which is the sum of both years, at a 40% tax rate ends up with 12,960. We already recognize 2880. So we have a net creditor debit of $10,080. And if we go down to the second journal entry, you'll see for this liability amount, we're going to defer 10,080 and we're going to write a check for 8160. 10,080 is a deferred tax liability. You can see, however, that it starts to even out in later years. Because in later years, when for tax purposes the depreciation is substantially less, we end up paying out by debiting more money than we have in terms of an income tax expense. We are paying out in terms of payable, writing a check. We are paying out more than we have an expense in these years, and that's because we now have a debit happening with a deferred tax liability, which means we're writing checks more than the income tax expense. Writing a check more than the income tax expense. And we can see in the deferred tax liability we have these debits flowing through. And at the end, our T account for deferred tax liability balances and we have a zero ending balance. Which proves that regardless of the method that we look at, it all evens out in the end, and we end up depreciating the same 120000 but for tax purposes we have more expense in early years, which means we have, ta we have taxes deferred in early years, deferred tax liability, and when we have less depreciation expense in later years, right here, we end up paying more in tax, writing checks that exceed the income tax expense in later years. And the reason is, is that now we have debits in the deferred tax liability account. And at the end, when the asset fully depreciated, we have a zero balance remaining in our deferred tax liability account. That is the end of part one of our Tax Conversation here is a complete course that you can find hour-long courses on cost accounting, and there's a link to the YouTube site, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word, where you'll find a complete listing of our videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.